Welcome back to Grade 7 Science, Unit Number 1, Interactions Within Ecosystems. This is Lesson Number 2.1, Food Chains, Food Webs, and Energy Flow. Did you walk to school today? Are you going to play a sport in gym class? Do I have any chores tonight? Are you going to read comic books at lunch? No, I'm not trying to be nosy here. These questions are meant to get you thinking about energy. Energy is what we need to do everything, even reading comic books. So where do we get the energy to do things? Well, we get our energy from food. But how do we get that energy? The way in which humans get food is pretty interesting. We actually have to start right at the beginning with plants. Plants get energy from the sun, the soil, and water. Animals, like cows, come along to eat the plants. When the animals eat the plants, they gain the energy which the plants stored. Then humans eat the animals. When they eat the animals, humans gain the stored energy from the animals. And of course, not all humans eat animals. Vegetarians and vegans get their energy by eating plants and other non-meat products. In science, we refer to this passing of stored energy from organism to organism as a food chain. Plants are at the bottom of the food chain, and humans and large animals are at the top of the food chain. So a good idea, uh, just put the video on pause so you can take a closer look at this food chain. All right, let's continue. You might be wondering, just how much energy do we save when we eat plants and or animals? Actually, we save very little energy. Over half of the energy we get from eating is used as fuel to help us perform different activities. A very small percentage is actually stored to help us build and repair our bodies. Within a food chain, each organism has a different role. Some organisms act as producers. Their job is to produce food for themselves and for others. Other organisms act as consumers. Consumers come in all shapes and sizes, and they eat the food made by the producers. Some organisms eat plants only. These organisms are known as herbivores. Organisms that eat herbivores are called carnivores. Carnivores are higher on the food chain. The top carnivore in the food chain eats smaller carnivores. Ever wondered why you don't see dead animals in the natural environment? That's because of two other types of organisms. Scavengers are organisms that eat dead or decaying plants and animals. Decomposers do not eat dead plants and animals, but their job is to help break down dead or waste material. All of the jobs which we read about above are referred to as niches or I've also heard it pronounced niches. An organism can have more than one niche or role. For example, a snail can be a scavenger and an herbivore, and a gull can be a scavenger and a carnivore. Sometimes a food chain does not do a perfect job of showing all of the ways in which animals eat each other. Smaller food chains can be connected with each other to form a food web. A food web shows all of the different ways in which food chains are connected. So when I finish speaking, you might want to put the video on pause just so you can get a closer look at this food web. But you can tell it's a food web because you don't have all of these nice straight vertical lines. You've got a lot of diagonal lines here. Um, showing a much more complex uh, relationship between the various organisms on the food web. 
Um, so why don't you put the video on pause now? All right, and let's wrap up. Okay, in tomorrow's class, uh, we're going to have a matchup activity where we're going to take uh, the six uh, biotic or abiotic examples here, and we're going to match them to the proper niche or role on the right. Uh, now, you guys don't have a smart board at home, so um, you could take a screenshot um, and then uh, print it up and uh, line up uh, the uh, different organisms with their niches. Uh, or uh, you can put the video on pause uh, and then just jot down the pairs. Um, in any event, uh, if you don't feel ready to do this activity yet, it means you need to go back and listen to this video at least one more time. Um, and then when you feel ready to try this activity, please put the video on pause. All right. And I look forward to hearing everybody's answers to this matchup activity in our next class. But until we meet again, this concludes today's video.